What's up, folks? <clears throat> we are continuing our adventure in Pillars of Eternity. Chris just headed out to her family's for the weekend. Well, not for the weekend, but she's going to go out there for the night. So I have been left with the cats. A big bowl of chicken soup. And I'm going to stream for a few hours tonight. All right, so last we had met, what do we have? We have this quest. Curran, a Dunred Rose cipher, asked me to look into some disappearances that he's too busy to investigate. He suspects that animances are behind it, and he wants me to resolve the matter by any means I can. So three people need to look for, Oli, Laura, and Elka. Oli is in a brothel and honors gift. Laura is a merchant in Copper Lane. And Elka spends her time in Brackenberry, which is where we're at, if I'm not mistaken. Now, it doesn't say where she's at in Brackenberry, so we can scour the zone, and then we'll head to the Charred Barrel is where we're going to head, because usually people are inside the taverns, if I had to guess. We'll see. What's up, Happy Metal Geek? Good evening to you as well. Give me any more gifts, and people will start thinking you're playing favorites. Noble. Oh, never mind. She's right there. How do you do? The dwarven woman is dressed and perfumed like a member of the nobility, but her sun-reddened skin and sweat-stained outfit suggest that she's been out here for quite some time. Afraid I just don't have the time right now. What was all that yelling about? The woman folds her arms and blushes beneath her sunburn. You shouldn't go nosing into other people's conversations. Well, I'm investigating Kennel's disappearance. Her eyebrows rise. That little Orlin finally got serious about this case, eh? Indeed. Didn't Rose strap for resources, so Kern sent me. Well, I'm glad someone's on it. She rolls her eyes. Anyway, I'll tell you whatever I can. What you need to know. Well... What was Kendall doing before he disappeared? She laughs sadly. The worst blazing rendition of the general speech from the Widow of the Wood that I've ever heard. She shakes her head. I love that fellow, but he's a tragic failure, yet somehow managed to get in with an acting troupe. How do you know him? She smirks. We met up from time to time over the past few months. Well, it was just a fling, really. Was it going to last? She picks at the corner of her sleeve and looks away. He was a little fool, but a sweet little fool. Alright, when and where did you last speak to Kendall? A week ago. He came back to my house for a bit of fun. Afterwards, we fell asleep. When I woke up, he was gone. No notes, nothing. Alright, anything different about him? He'd started hanging out with a bunch of actors. Seemed alright, except for that woman. She scowls. That woman with her long willowy legs and slender arms. Always came around wearing those low cut dresses and impossible shoes. What was her name? Her expression hardens. I don't know. I never cared to learn it. She uncrosses her arms and lets them slowly fall to her side. I didn't realize it might be important. Alright, tell me about Kendall. Alright, that's all the questions I have right now. So, part of an acting troupe. The only acting troupe I know of was over in Copper Lane. However, we can go over to the brothel and Andres Griff's Andres Gift because it's right here. All right, there's a brothel here. Is that going to be the salty mast, perhaps? I 
Grab his person, go! Uh-oh, somebody just got robbed. The man's fancy clothes are ripped and blood flows from a fresh cut above his eye. He tries to push himself up, but his arm is shaking. He winces painfully. What happened? Help him up first. Th thank you, he gasps as he rises. My head. I can't believe they just attacked you in the middle of the street. Uh, neither can I. He slowly stretches out one leg, grimacing at his scraped knee. It's a rough part of town, but the rebel's never been violent. Even a night with Ikali isn't worth this. He limps away. Okay, so obviously... Oh, hello, we're right down here. Got some blight. Scepter spike. What is this? Looks like the top portion of a scepter. Hmm. Keep an eye on. Barnacles across the hull of this beached boat. Who am I looking for in this place? We're looking for Ollie. The Salty Mast. Nothing like this in Gilded Vale. Just Walroon and the milkmaid. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> okay. Over fried cod, water <laughs> nail, and prostitution. <laughs> A bastion of dear wooden culture. I love it, dear. Now to find a home for my other staff. <laughs> Jesus, all the dialogue. That was great, Durant, you pervert. A new face? Welcome to the Salty Mask. Good day to you. The Moa woman watches you suspiciously. One hand is tensed at her side, but as you approach, she relaxes and gives you a friendly, if weary, smile. I don't see many outfitted like you who aren't looking for trouble. You aren't looking for trouble, are you? No, I'm not. What kind of trouble are you having? A frown ripples across her blue facial markings. The kind that's bad for business. Local rowdies have taken to harassing my hard-working boys and girls, and our customers. They started showing up after this rash of Hollowborn, and they've been driving my regulars away. She looks you up and down, scratching her chin. I've been looking for someone to help me clean up things around here, and word on the street is you've cleaned up a few messes already. The knights are too busy sniffling around Duke Avar to bother with us commoners in the gift, and I'd just as soon not deal with their bureaucracy anyway. Tell me how I can help. She draws you closer. These thugs tend to roam in groups, which suggests to me they aren't random incidents. She places one large finger on your chest. You put a stop to these attacks, and I'll find a real nice way to thank you. She winks. Got me? Alloth wipes his hands on his robes, looking around. I would uh, request that thanks in copper if I were you. Alright, I've got other questions. What about these attacks? Yeah, we just saw one, so we witnessed one outside. Okay, what about your... something else? Is there someone here named Settle? She laughs. You must be new in town, dearie. She's only the most sought-after girl in the district. You might want to spend some time with her. Just ask. She's a thousand for the night, but worth every pound. Or so they tell me. Fancy a go with her. She nudges you in the ribs. Best money you could spend in the gift. What quest did we have with Cyril? I've got plenty of coin. Let's do it. You'll find her quarter upstairs. She lays a large hand on your shoulder. Don't mind the burly fellows at the door. They're just here to make sure everyone has a good time. Alright, we have multiple quests here now, so we can... Big Dumsy? Big Dermsy. 
The Orland man seems to walk with a slight limp. He doesn't say anything, but stops to regard you with big interest. What's wrong with your leg? He just laughs and shakes his head. <laughs> it's not his leg that causes him to limp. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, let's see if that dude is around here that I can talk to. Patrons, patrons. Chef. Guards. Who's Wade? Wade's eyes are red. Uh, red blah, 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 blah. I need to restart that one. Wade's eyes are red rimmed and unfocused. He stares into a filthy mug as if searching for something. He shivers and takes another drink. Why don't you just take one of those stools over there? He swats at the air in your general direction. Nowhere for me else to go. Not for the wife and the state, my boy, my... My... His face freezes with a stricken expression, and he turns back to the bar, muttering into his drink. Hmm. What's up with him? Alright, lines, two lips. What do you got? She leans on the bar, her black painted nails tapping the wood. What'll it be? Nothing at the moment, because... Oh, I better save. You give me any more gifts and people will start thinking you're playing favorites. Oh, that's right. I need to sell. Ah, I forgot about that. Now's a good time. Good day to you. I need to deposit all these pets, I think, when I get back to the... Right here, here we go. The man is at a table by himself, but constantly glances at the opposite bench as if waiting for someone. He reeks of alcohol, and he moves with the torpor of someone who's gotten used to spending most of his time drunk. This table's taken. Find another. He spreads his elbows on the wood and pulls his drink between them. Now, I've got questions about Lendry. His face twists into a confused scowl. What's it to you? Hmm. Lindy was your friend. At least you could do his answer a few questions. He eyes you warily. Yeah, fine. You don't have to get your small clothes in a knot about it. So what was you we were wanting with Lindry? Tell me about him. Me spend most of his time here drinking with me. Tells you enough, doesn't it? He takes a gulp of his drink and shrugs. He didn't volunteer details and I didn't ask. But he had a working man's hands and a working man's taste for drink. So when did you last see him? Right here, getting drinks with me. He slaps a spot on the bench. Just like we have every night for the past five years. I couldn't actually tell you much about him, and I think he preferred it that way. He frowns at the rough wood grain on the table. That's probably why we got on so well. Plenty of things we didn't talk about. But anyway, I remember that night because he said things were finally turning around. He said he had a steady job, clean up. Have another crack at the respectable life. And I told him if that was the case, he could buy the drinks. He traces the rim of his cup. And that's when she showed up. Ah, tell me about this woman. A real fancy lady. Name's Lumdala. He taps his head. I don't remember much these days, but I remember her. Usually, you'd have to pay a month's copper to spend time with a woman like that. But Lumdala? He shakes his head. She was falling all over Lindry that night. Left with him, too. Ooh, where'd they go? A guff laugh rattles his throat. <laughs> she said they were going on to see some friendly performance. 
If you ask me, they had their own plans to perform that night. He makes an obscene gesture and grins. She just said that they had to pick something up at her house in Copper Lane first, some cozy little place by the northern gate. He picks up his cup. Even a drunk like me knows what that means. For what it's worth, she says she earns her coin over at that amphitheater in Copper Lane. That's where she said they were going to go see their show. Maybe someone there saw him. Now, let me know if you find him, eh? That bastard owes me around if he's found the good life. Alright, so the bard has now shown up at two different places. What quest do I have for Serla? This one. I met a young Glanfathan named Thriston at the Brackenbury Inn. He and a prostitute named Sarah work together fleecing wealthy nobles. Oh yeah, he wants the medallion back for his broke for his clan. Forgot about that. Ah, there's Cyril. Greetings. Powder almost hides the circles under her eyes, and Roe dusts her two prominent cheekbones. Rouge, sorry. Despite it all, she is beautiful. She favors you with a smile she must have practiced and perfected. Hello, stranger. Let me make you more comfortable. I'm on a quest to restore a Glanfathen clan. She takes in your attire. So you like role-playing? I can work with that. Uh, your friend Thrist went to me. He needs that medallion. So do I. She raises her chin. I offered him half his money, and he refused. She crosses her arms and paces in a slow circle around you. I'm sure he told you all about his broken clan. Did he also tell you that I got him where he is today? I really am sorry for him, but I'll bet you anything he lives better now than he did in Air Glanfith. I've worked a long time for a way out, and I'm not giving it up just because Thriston suddenly got nostalgic. Hmm, I'll buy it from you. She laughs. It's worth 6,000 pans. If you've got that kind of coin, I'll gladly help you spend it. I have so much money, why not? Cheryl goggles at the bag of coin in her hand. She looks back at you for just a second before reaching into her bodice. She holds a carved Adrian medallion by a cord and gives it to you. She cradles the bag of coppers. I could be in a cottage in Brackenbury tomorrow. She looks hopefully at the medallion in your hand. I'm not going to tell you your business, but if you do mean to give that to Thriston, it would mean a lot to me too. I hope he finds everything he's looking for back home. She pulls a moonstone ring off her finger. Please take this. It's always given me an edge with people around here, but I'm done with that part of my life. Farewell. You have the option to be a dick right there. I don't know if you noticed that. Like, you have the option to tell her, I've paid for my time and now I want to use it. So she gave me a ring. Of resolve. Why not? Alright, let's get out of here. I think all roads lead to Brackenberry at this point. Other than that, we still need to take care of the ruffians in this part of the district. Although I don't know where they're attacking from. That, that was the, the one part I don't know. Oh, there's a thug right there. Well, if it isn't Defiance Bay's favorite foreigner. He nods to his shifty-eyed companions. Let's give him a proper welcome. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, 
Turn on my watch, boyos. There's a key. Looks like it belongs to a house in Andra's gift. Okay. Well, I've been to the abandoned houses. They were just drug addicts. Let's check this ramshackle house. That might actually be the uh, one of the keys. Since it's already on the map, we'll check and look. Ephra wears a defiant expression and a sturdy yet battered suit of armor. She seems to bear each scratch and ding with pride. Wedden sent you here to drag me out? You can tell him this business with the brothel is more important than digging around the ruins for antiques. I'm here about the trouble with the salty mast. Ordinary Crith are angry, as they should be with that crooked demise toying with the nobles. Toadying up with the nobles, she sneers. She's using the tragedy of Waden's legacy to line her pockets. She's no better than the Adrian overlords we drove out 200 years ago. People around here know you to be an honest broker. May has made it so only the rich can afford her settlement. And she sits in the poorest district of Defiance Bay. How's that fair? We've taken matters into her own pants. But she's the real criminal. Why don't you tell her to back down? Alright, let's see if we can get her to lower her prices. Why not? back inside see if we can convince her to God's keep you all right let's talk about your prices what else am I supposed to do I have to provide certain measures for my employers and their clients, especially with so many hollow-born in the district. With the price of bitter squash as high as I've got no choice but to raise mine. She taps your chest with a finger. And don't get me started on cutthroat business, not with the dominoes carrying on the way they do. Hmm, I could talk with them about their bitter squash prices. She raises her arm. It's your neck. The account of domino would be the easiest to persuade. She handles the family books. With any luck, you can find her at their manor over in Brackenberry. Just watch your step. Alright. About to find out. You gotta go to the... the um... Tavern there anyway to complete this quest with Thurston.
All right, so the first thing we can do is let's go to the charred barrel because that's where we can wrap up this quest. Hail, Traveler. Did you get the medallion from Cyril? I did. His eyes are as wide and round as the artifact in his hands. You've given my people a gift we couldn't possibly repay. I'll do the best I can, though. He shoves a bag of coin into your hands. This is everything I have. Take it, please. Uh... Keep it. Your clan can use it to rebuild. The shattering spirit will sing of your kindness for generations to come. If you ever find yourself in Air Glanfeth, please honor us with your visit. Farewell. Alright, so. Try to do some rep. I need reputation, so. One of these days, I'm going to have to check back and see if we could talk to the guy who has Adair's family records. But right now we have to go to House Damadrell. No idea the entrance to get over here. It's not Damadrell. What is it? Dam Damonio? No, it's Duemenil. Fuck, I've been pronouncing that wrong the whole time. It's probably Dominal. Dominal? Dominal Manor? Alright, we'll figure it out. Gods keep you. I need to speak with Brikanta. If you say so. She's up the stairs in the room at the end of the hall. Mind your manners. Okay. End of the hall, he said. Hail and well met. The woman must be well into middle age, but there isn't a line on her face. Her large green eyes are watchful behind a curtain of glossy black hair. She studies you. I don't believe we've met. I'd remember you. I understand they control bitter squash seeds in Defiance Bay. I'd like to see the price lowered for the salty mast. She narrows her eyes. I don't know who told you that, but even if it were true, you're asking for a favor. And I only do favors for friends. She leans in, pursing her painted lips. But we could be friends. I just need a little something from you first. What kind of favor do you have in mind? She crosses her arm and watches you out of the corner of her eyes. There's a certain someone who may or may not be named Kulthig. He insulted me. I'd like to make an example of him. What do you have in mind? I'd hate to stifle your imagination. She wrinkles her nose with a quick smirk. Just see that you teach him a lesson he won't soon forget. Hmm. He's in Andra's gift. Who was the third person we needed to talk to for the, um... Elka, Copper Lane... Laura is the one in Copper Lane. Probably finish that one first before I get too sidetracked.
Since he's a merchant, so... Looking for Laura. Right there. Good day to you. I'm looking into some disappearances, and I hear that your sister's gone missing. Her voice drops to a whisper. I, I didn't think anything would help me. When Cora disappeared, I, I tried Denred Row, the Crucible Knights, even the dozens here. She points her thumb at the large building behind her. No one had time to go look for a missing girl then. She bites her lip. That was three weeks ago. Alright, if there's anything I could tell you that will help, just ask. So, tell me about her. She's my younger sister. Always had a head full of dreams. She was convinced there was something special waiting for her, that she'd be remembered and happy and important. Laura shakes her head. She's got plenty of heart, but not the commitment to match. S still, when she got that theater job, I thought she was about to turn around. Did you see anyone with Cora when she disappeared? She was... is very sociable. She always enjoyed crowds. I'm afraid I can't narrow it down beyond that. What was she doing time to time she disappeared? Uh-huh. Acting troupe called... The... The... Her brows knit. The Revel of Stars, that's it. She was pretty inexperienced. I, I think that's why she was so excited to get a role. I'm afraid I don't know anything else about it. Alright, so everything is pointing. She puts both hands over her heart. You don't know how much this means to me. Just to know someone's actually looking for her. So, everything is about the theater troupe. Which is right here. There she is. The statuesque woman has a gaze that could cut stone. She turns her chiseled cheekbones to the sky and favors you with a look of acknowledgement. Her eyes shimmer under silvered eye shadow in a razor-precise line of coal. Before you can speak, she throws her hand up in dramatic fashion. Greetings. Autographs after the performance, please. Great art requires great concentration, and greatness is expected from the Revel of Stars. Uh huh. I was wondering if a woman named Cora was part of your group. I can't say I recognize the name. She suddenly seems focused on the length of her fingernails. You can remember lines from a play, but not the name of a fellow actor. My work requires great focus and attention. She flicks her fingertips in frustration. I don't have the time to memorize the name of every ingredient who joins our troupe for a week. Uh huh. What about Kendall? She narrows her silvered eyes. I'm not sure who this Kendall is, or why you would malign our intent, but rest assured we have a process for evoking a satisfying performance for even the most inexperienced of players. And what about Lendry? She lets out a big laugh. The drunken Andra's gift! Men flatter themselves when it comes to the attentions of a beautiful woman. The pallid knight herself could waltz into that bar, and he'd believe she was there to sit on his lap and listen to bawdy stories. <laughs> I dare. The Pallid Knight. I think I courted her once. She hated being called that. I'm just analyzing facts, lady. And the facts are that one of us stinks of cheap ale and desperation, while the other has a long and illustrious career. She tilts her head towards you. Consider well which is a more credible source. Aye, con her sort, nigh to be trusted. 
Surely there's someone else who can ask about all this. I am but a humble actor. Uh-huh. Well, you're connected to three disappearances that you claim to know nothing about. Then what else do you expect me to say on the subject? She sighs and turns her face to the sky. If you'll excuse me, I have a performance to attend to. The young man steps up next to you, his gaze fixed on the other actors, his voice low. Hey, meet me in Lamdala's house. I know what's going on. He claps his hand and whistles at the other actors. Well done, well done indeed. Alright. Do I have a location now? Yes, I do. Just up the road. One of those is the Gribbon. Okay, we don't want to go to the dormitory. We're going to go up the road. the house but to find out something nefarious I believe light flame and sound the painting depicts the famous scene from the light of dawn, in which the traveler and the ghost happen upon a starving man. A young man appears before you, trembling and excited. You! I saw you with Lundala, but the amphitheater. Look, I, I don't know what your business with her is, but I want out of this mess. I just came to Guy to grab my things. Just, just let me leave, all right? Yeah, well, first, take a breath. Calm down. Tell me what's going on. He nods, filling his lungs. Uh, thank you, but there's not much time. Lamdala's out to get me. I need to get out of here. Maybe out of the city. He reaches slowly into a satchel and produces a small key. Uh, this opens the door behind you. There's a passage in there leading down to... Uh, theater? He shudders. I it's easier if you see for yourself. He licks his lips. Since I've helped you... I want you to promise that you'll leave my name out of this. It looks like the runt is willing to sell out the rest of his litter. This could be amusing. Hmm. All I care about is preventing another disappearance. What you did before is irrelevant to me. So thank you, and, and good luck. He doesn't look you in the eye. So, he probably had something to do with it, but we're giving him the benefit of the doubt and letting him go, so... Margaret's fire casts light in dark places. Better save here. There's another door here. A simple test. That's settled. Alright, going out of the catacombs to find something nasty, I would imagine. What's up, Graham? It's a pretty awesome game. Honestly, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting to the second one, because as much as I love this one, I love the story in the second one better. And you get a ship. Like, you get to be a pirate. It's so cool. Alright. Something creepy's going on in here. Scarf. A simple silken scarf is crumpled on the filthy flagstones. Essence radiates it from a like heat, and the closer you get to it, the more you feel a confusing mixture of joy, surprise, and pain. Let's pick it up. You hold the scarf and focus on it, and the world around you shifts. Something about you shifts, too. The smooth fabric is still in your hands, but you're in a small yet cozy house, and Laura is looking on from the scarf back to you, asking if you like it. She's smiling because the answer is written on your face, so this has got to be the sister. This was four years ago, but you still wear the scarf on days like today. 
After all, you wore it that first day you met the actress with silvered eyes, so who's to say it won't bring you luck again tonight? It's nestled around your throat, soft and warm and comforting. You're halfway through the third act, and you can feel the audience's eyes on you, hungry and attentive. You were nervous at first when that woman brought you down here. You wondered what kind of show you'd signed up for, but this has gone better than you could have hoped. You reach the end of your monologue, and the scarf tightens around your neck. It chokes the final line from your throat, which is embarrassing because your debut was going so well. But when you try to pull the scarf away, it only tightens further. You're confused, and you look to the audience, expecting someone to rush to your rescue. Then you see their faces, and their eyes, and that hungry, attentive look, and you understand. The stage fades to black. The scarf falls from your hand and flutters to the ground, but Cora's soul lingers, stuck between a familiar token and a question. It wants to know, but it wants to retreat. You had your sister's love and the courage to follow your dreams. Take comfort in that as you find your way to the next life. The soul glows with warmth before fading back into the fabric of the scarf. Ho 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 ho. Lundala emerges from the shadows, her silvered eyes glowing in the darkness. Well, well, if it isn't our friend from Dunrid Row. Oh, I don't, I'm not even going to wait. You'll pay for what you've done to these people. There's not even a question. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, that was a quickie. Ring of protection. Oh wow, that's a nice ring. wants that what rings do you have currently buddy deflection so he's already got one let's give one to Durant he doesn't have a ring yet Stay out of sight. Ooh, secret door! Wait, I've already been down in here. These are the catacombs I was in earlier, and that—that that was that wall I couldn't um, break open earlier. Quiet. Man, that's just creepy as. So what are, do we need to talk to the sister or just go straight back to It just says return to Curran. So maybe we don't have to return to the sister. I mean we might want to. Don't know that it matters. But we shall see. Welcome. Cora's dead. She, her eyes shimmer with tears. I, I don't know what to say. I, I tried to keep my hopes up, but I think a part of me already knew. It doesn't make this any easier, though. I, I can't help but think that if someone had looked for her sooner when I first asked for help, then maybe she'd be here. Yeah, we've caught those responsible and prevented this from happening to others. That's what matters now. Yes, you you're right. I suppose I'll have to make arrangements. Thank you for finding her. So, we don't actually get any extra reward or anything for talking to her, the persons. So, we're not going to waste our time doing it to the rest. 
Um, go back to current at Hadris House in Brackenbury. Brackenbury. Oh, I gotta answer some comments over here on the video from this morning. I'll need to watch this video later. Water guys were at the door. Let's see here.
Let's see here. <laughs> Man, this is a discussion around uh, the proposed leak, the supposed leak of the OGL is really fascinating. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked now. I'm not playing, guys, because I got sidetracked answering more comments, and somebody sent me a link to a. Uh, uh, lawyer conversation, and then, um, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be interesting to see how it unfolds and when and if Wizards decides to make a uh, um, actual comment on the matter. Hopefully sooner rather than later. All right, let's get back to this. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon if you haven't done it already, folks. Support with a super chat. Join as a member. Don't forget the Patreon page. Thanks for hanging out. Where the hell were we going? Got sidetracked. Curran at Hadra's house. I went to the wrong place. Gosh darn it. Brackenberry, Brackenberry. Ba -ba -ba -da. I may need to go get another glass of iced tea. That looks like they put us right at the Hadra house. Welcome. I found the missing people. Yes, you've been all over to find space since we last spoke. His alert eyes search you. Well, what did you find? They were all murdered. A woman named Lumdala killed them as part of her performances. He hisses. Something big. I knew it. I'll send my men after her right away. Uh, no worries. I already, uh, already took care of it. Indeed? His toothy smile widens. I can't say I'm terribly sorry. You've been a resourceful investigator, and your shrewdness has helped resolve the most troublesome case. And saved many lives, I'm sure. Something else. Oh, no, we agreed to leave him out of it. It was worth it to put a stop to these heinous crimes. Man, should I rat that dude out? We should take... Ah, I don't want to go back on my word. Thank you for your generosity. Oh, uh, no payment is necessary. Most generous of you. Dunwood Row will long remember this, as will I. And should you decide that lengthy investigations and low pay are your style, there's a place for you at Dunwood Row. So I'm just trying to earn rep Yeah, you've gained reputation with Defiance Bay Major. 
I want to go back to the um... Good day, stranger. Let's go see if they'll talk to us yet about Adair's history, about his brother. Because he would not talk to us earlier, and I'd like to see if they will now that I've gotten some faction boosts. <clears throat> That will probably be somebody telling me that... Oh, that's my brother. Alright, I got Minecraft at 7 tonight, it looks like, so we got plenty of time to get some more uh, of this under our belt. And it looks like my brother said he just got my niece a copy of Minecraft for the Switch. So, I've, him and I, he and I have been playing with my nephew on the PC for like the last year and a half, and our niece you know his daughter has been wanting to join us but she's been too young but she's been playing it on the switch on creator mode for like the last three or four months and she's been wanting to join us so bad because it's like our it's what we do every saturday night and every saturday night she comes down and wants to play with us and she just got her account set up tonight so hopefully we're going to be able to do a big family session tonight well met friend We've had a number of inquiries about such information. I'm afraid we have to bar access. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. For the first time, 
He turns his full attention toward you, and his eyes flicker in recognition. Of course, that policy is for the general public. Exceptions can be made for those who have already proven their worth. He looks up at a shelf and withdraws a thick volume, shifting a layer of dust aside with his hand. The rosters are in the front, the inventories of the dead in the back. He passes it into Adair's outstretched hands. Adair leafs through the book for some time anxiously, running his thick farmhand fingers over page after page of names. At last, his hands stop, his fingers just below one name. Roden Talesh died 18 Majaburnho 2808, third battle of Cle Clea Cleabon Relock. Ladies and Glan father names, I swear. I had Saras. I'll be the effigy. You fought for Ray at Saris. Why do you fight for Ray at Saris? I'm sure he had a good reason. Well, I am too. He stares at the pages, complexion drained. I am too. We gotta go there. That battlefield. Clea. The one I said. I don't know how else I'm gonna make sense of all this. I gotta see what he saw. Okay. And who knows, maybe his spirit will even be there and we can have one of your weird talks with him. It'll be worth trying, right? I'll help any way I can. I appreciate that. I wish I could say you won't regret it, but you certainly might. Alright. Alright, well at least we finally continued that quest. Alright, so what am I missing here? Because this... Doesn't actually... She wanted me to deal with a dude, but I don't see it in the journal. Let's look up this quest real quick. It didn't actually put it in the journal, the dude I'm supposed to look for. I don't see that quest in my journal, though. We're going to go see because I don't, I don't know why it didn't update the quest. I'll have to go find out. Why is there mist everywhere? Yeah, see, I don't have the house. Oh, yeah, it is. It's right over here. Colfug's house. Oh, I remember. I came into this dude's house before, and, and he just told me to get out. So 
So I wonder why I just it didn't track it in my journal. That seems weird. The young elven man squints at you in surprise. You can't just barge into somebody's home like this. Who do you think you are? I'm a friend of Recanta Dominil. He takes a step back. Now, wait just a minute. I'm staying clear of the Dominils. You understand? Surely we could put this behind us. So even though it wasn't in my journal, obviously I do have the quest. Okay. What did you do to make her so angry? I told her she wasn't my type. Maybe not as tactfully as that, but I didn't want trouble with the most dangerous man in Defiance Bay. How could I know she'd take it so personally? Oh, so we have it. I said, I won't hurt you, but you gotta leave Defiance Bay, man. Bricanta Brick obviously has got it in for you. You don't have to beg me twice. He dashes for the door. They won't find me. I, I promise. Andre, bless you. Alright. So she's just a vindictive bitch. Okay. Brackenberry. They're obvious. Because of how you look. Are you kidding me? My face looks like a cautionary tale about the dangers of wild animals. And I'm even shorter than other Orleans my age. People just like to heckle me. Don't ever let them. Be proud of who you are. They're the ones who should feel shame. Alright. Upstairs we go to report to this crazy woman, apparently. Never been told no before in her life. Some women can't handle rejection, apparently, in the game world. Why don't I hear any footsteps? Seems Greetings. Odd. I've dealt with Kolfeg. That makes me very glad indeed. She draws one crimson fingernail to her lips. Tell me about it. Don't leave out a single detail. She nibbles the tip of her fingernail. I'm going to lie. We're going to flat out lie here. He's dead. A small smile curls the corner of her lips. Uh, consider me a satisfied customer. She slips a pouch under your belt. And any time you want to come back, you can have a look at my special wares. All right, now that I've helped you out, how about you make bitter squash more affordable for Maya's lot? Fair enough. Never let it be said that I don't give as much as I get. Right, show me what's for sale. No! I don't want to sell my kitty cat. Give my kitty cat back. I gotta deposit all these pets somehow. this all right back we go to Mia at the brothel and Andra's gift it's our next place of distraction I mean destination it's not distraction it's not a distraction when it's a business opportunity. All right. Minecraft at seven with my brother, my nephew, and my niece. Okay, the first time I've played with my niece. Hey, Ella, can I uh, talk to your, uh, you know, your friend? What is it about Isselmir? I'm right here, you know. Oh, no, you're both great. It's just, well... I feel like I don't get to spend as much time with her, and she's just so funny. <laughs> Some of the things she says are not nearly as funny when you've been hearing them for 50 years. Fair enough. Andre's 
Lord's gift. People have opinions. I gotta go answer some stuff here. I think the gods certainly use us, and I'm not yet convinced there's any greatness in being chosen as such. Verus, that makes two of us alone in a world of zealots and madmen. into the salty mast. Welcome. All right, they've agreed to lower the price of bitter squash just for you. That's news worth celebrating. And I'll see that the rest of the district can afford to celebrate too. Ooh, and if we need to rest, we can have a free room. A discount. Well, in that case, I can't afford not to sample the house specials. Hervius' hands dart about his tunic for loose copper. You're all welcome to watch. Anyone? Anyone? He shrugs and continues to search his clothes for, <laughs> clothes for coins. Your loss. A knowing grin warps her blue markings. All right, yeah, so. <laughs> Can we finish that quest if we go back? Well, let's go back and see what they have to say at the other building, because technically I think I just wrapped that quest up, but they might have something to say back at the other building. Usually when the quest is finished, it doesn't matter, so... But it's always worth taking a look, and I need to get some more... Oh, I actually had more tea, I didn't know. I'm good. Although I do need to charge the phone. That one's good. I need to charge both my phones. I'll be right back. I'm going to bio and charge my phones. I'll be back in a couple minutes.
Let's see if they have anything further to say. Oh, they're gone. All right. Oh, damn. Seek out the St. Worth Battlefield with the deer. In Cliven Relag. Alright, we can do that next. defend yourselves. Something like that. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Hold up. He died in a battle at Quemin well, Relay. He wants to see the battlefield. That's where I'm at, right? This is the place. Big Brother's last battle. I wish I could tell you what we're looking for. Anything from that battle, I guess. Whatever 15 years of rain hasn't buried. You see my brother's ghost, you give me a holler, all right? Oh yeah, for sure, bro. But we don't know exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Quiet. Not much here. Hey, those people are gone now. The Guardians, because we, I guess maybe because we already finished that quest. <laughs> Two reason. Maybe I don't need to be on like stealth mode. Light, flame, and sound. Okay. Well, nothing on this side of the river, apparently. Can't go down. Nothing over here. I guess they cleaned up real good after the battle. This is embarrassing. That's Slowly now. I don't see anything where I'm sneaking Those space right. painters can't guard that place. These ruins are claimed, friend. On your way. No need to get riled, boys. We're just passing by. Just passing through. Look at his talisman, Pag. Aethasian. Uh, how about that? A godless sack of shit. We got a blazing corpse worshiper on our hands. Actually, they never found the body. Only reason for the legacy is because the Duke doesn't got the guts to see you all slaughtered. The gods want you dead. Me and Pag, though, we done our part during the purges, didn't we, Pag? Seamstresses? Make your cracks now. Got no god or homeland to avenge you. By Magrin, this will be short work. This has nothing to do with gods, just ignorance. Doesn't matter who it was for anyway. Country's better for the purges. Maybe we start a new purge right here. 
Well. They were right. That was short work. <laughs> Tyrion standard piece. Is that his brother? The tip of some metal object protrudes from the mound of watery river silt. With both hands, you and Adair begin digging in the mud until the object is dislodged. You close your hand around it and pull it from the wet earth. The object is steel. It's in a semicircular frame and about the size of your fist. At even points around the semicircle, jagged points jut out like tongues of flame, the rays of a rising sun. At the sun's center is the carved silhouette of a voreless plant. I've seen these before. They've topped the standards of Ray at Ceres. Or did when wide when we alive. Well, it's something. Just not sure what it gets me. Dunward Row might be able to make something of it. But it's a thought. Lots of people would have touched this. Standard bearer's position of honor in most places, but the Red Sarens actually took the fighting to it. From what I heard, serious bunch. It's not a lot to hang hopes on, but hey, we were lucky to find anything at all. So, I guess it's back to Defiance Bay. Unless we spot my brother's bones laying about on our way out. Alright. Well, we helped that Cypher dude. Um. I wonder if I should stop by the stronghold. Is there anything currently being worked on? Doesn't look like it. Let's go get something new started. And then we can go back to the city. <clears throat> I must say, I'm impressed. At some point, we could probably go back to, um... Oh, we could actually just resolve this since we're already here. We need to keep exploring the ruins underneath. Ooh, a new grimoire. Alright, what's the state of the keep? What can we build next? I think it's all fluff at this point. Because I've maxed out my security, right? Oh no, the training grounds have security. Okay, hold up. Gelade, well done. A formidable fortress in the old style. We don't build them like this anymore, you know. Not by the sea. Too vulnerable to cannons. Alright, uh, I think it was back to Andra's gift. That's where the cipher was, I think. What's up, Sean Hall? The bigger they are, the harder they fall? Usually the case, yes. Ah, uh, no, it's not here. It's the next one over. It's Brocken... Brackenbury, I think. Yep, Hadron House. 
Let's go see how our Orland Cypher friend wants to help us with this. What's up, Curran? Well met, friend. Show him the steel sun. I want to trace a man who might have touched this item. He looks it over, his ears twitching with interest. From a war standard, yes? Red Ceres? Y yes, I believe I could be of assistance here. The imprint isn't fresh, but it is well preserved for the most part. If you are looking for someone, your rather unusual gift may be of value here. Images can be fleeting. Your targo will be easier to identify by the makeup of his soul. I will share what I see. It will be up, up to you to make sense of it. Your pardon my presence in your mind. All for a good cause. He takes you by the hand, holding the steel sun in the other. Now, clear your mind of all wayward thoughts. Okay, so this is with the dare. You close your eyes and concentrate. The sun is bright in your mind's eye, warm with the pulse of collective experience, and noisy with the thought of the past, of battle, of faith, of home. You drift from voice to voice, thought to thought. The dare's soul, the vibrant signature with which to locate his brother. Actually, I don't need to narrate this in his voice because this is just his thoughts. Or is that one voice stands out amongst the din, brassy and earnest, a shade brighter than a dare's, but unmistakably of the same construction. You have no image of its owner, but his journey is imprinted within the points and curves of the steel sun. And in your mind, it opens before you as a path stretching both southwards to Gilded Vale and northward over the uneven terrain that joins the Deerwood to Red Ceres. You trace the path, trace the path back to its origin, far back as you could find, gliding over plains and hillsides to a one-room home in Gilded Vale with a thatched roof and a dirt floor. The path is faint here, its distance and time rendering images blurry and details scarce. From Gilded Vale, it follows a road toward Madmer Bridge, reaching the gates of Defiance Bay before diverting abruptly, cutting northward in a beeline for Red Ceres. The path leads to a Red Seren city regal and austere in the Adir imperial style. It winds through the streets and climbs a grand set of stairs into a stately building, passing through pointed archways into what appears to be a throne room. Upon the throne sits a man whose head is pure, blinding light, and as its gaze turns to you, the light drowns out all else. Its voice carries the force of thunder, but its words are impossible to make out in the imprint. Echoes of echoes. The voice and the light fade, and the path bends backward carrying you alone to a barracks, then back southward, marching into Deerwood and skirmishing along the way. Upon one battlefield, the imprint is vivid, and you see a red Saren standard topped with a steel sun clutched in the hands of a fallen soldier. You see a young man in red Saren armor with a dare's straw-colored hair race towards the standard and lift it, the path you've been following clear to see beneath his feet, and as his hand brushes the steel tip, you can hear his thoughts racing in a blur, and they are of his god and his country, and a brother he hopes is far away from this place. In an instant, the thoughts are gone as well as the man, and the standard is passed to another soldier. You pick the path up again as it meanders south and disintegrates in the shadow of Clipping Relag. You open your eyes. Anything? Looks like you were working real hard there. So your brother got as far as Defiance Bay before turning to Red Ceres instead. He met Wadewin there. Then he enlisted. Well, what did he talk about with Wadewin? I don't know. Wadewin's head was a beam of light. I figured that. Wadewin and me had heard enough stories from his uprising to know it wasn't just some tall tale. Doesn't mean he was Aethys. It could have been some wizard's trick. It's what they talked about that's important. What'd they say? I don't know. That's not funny. Come on. That metal sun, my brother touched it. You saw where he went. Now what'd he talk about with Wide One? Why'd my brother fight for Raid Saris? I really don't know. <sighs> I guess that's it. We'll find some other way to know why he did what he did. I don't think we will. What will we do? Look for more war relics? We were lucky to find this one. The soldiers that fought with him are long dead. The battle was a massacre. And whatever Aethys knows, he's not talking to anyone. Hmm. I wish I could have been of more help. You have my sympathies. As often as an item shows us what we need to know, it will disappoint. My files are full of cases that have run cold. 
on bad days, I think, often of leaving, applying my skills to something less confounding. Alright, so is that an end, or is there going to be more? Oh, it finished it. Okay, interesting. So I guess we're not going to know anymore. That's unfortunate. Alright, what quests do we have yet? Alright, I think we can go to the... Um, I don't know what is the next district. Got to look at the map. I don't know where we go next. But I know Oloth needs help. Um, next time we get the chance, I'm buying you a pint. That means a lot to Dare. Oh, do you want one too? Sorry, I meant for Isselmere. I'll get you one too. <laughs> he has a fascination with Isselmere. Right. Well, let's um. Where are we? Raymond Manor. Where was the sanitarium? Copper Lane. I feel like that's the only place we're gonna find what. Aloth is looking for. Yeah. No, this is just the Scrivener's dormitory. What is the Hall of Revered Mysteries? Let's go see what this is all about. And while we're doing that, I can check my stuff over here. I'd wager there are more than a few banned books in here. Good day to you. You're welcome to browse the stacks, but keep in mind to keep your voice down. This is still a temple after all, and Grimda doesn't tolerate disorder. Who's Grimda? Why, the High Archivist. She's one of the most accomplished scholars alive today. Nothing goes on here without her knowing about it. Well, almost nothing anyway. She scratches behind her ear. You should probably tread lightly around her today. This is a temple? It looks like a library. Her eyes grow wide and round. That's because it is. Whale is the god of mysteries and answers. Encryption and decryption. Concealment and revelation. She raises her hands to the row of shelves. Its guidance comes from the understanding of the unknown and the protection of hidden knowledge. The Hall of Revealed Mysteries was built to celebrate that. Really didn't answer my question. 
She sighs and rolls her eyes. Yes, it is a library of sorts. Temples dedicated to whale tend to hold vast stores of knowledge. We use that knowledge to unravel and preserve the mysteries of the world. Good day, stranger. An elderly dwarf surveys the stacks. Her skin looks as tough and wrinkled as a walnut. Despite her stature, she manages to look down her nose at you. You're welcome to look around, but let the priests and scriveners continue their search. She shoots the nearest robed figure with her glance. Wouldn't do to give them any other excuses. What are they looking for? Maybe I could find it. And I could trust you to bring it back, I suppose. You certainly could do much worse than this lot, anyway. Thieves have made off with an ancient scroll of whale. They intend to blaspheme by selling that which should remain hidden. The secret of the hundred visions. The guards caught one of them, but they were overzealous in their interrogations. All they could piece together was something about a farmhouse on the road to Deerford. Track the thieves down. I don't care what you do with them, but bring back the scroll. Whale rewards the persistent seeker, and so do I. Seems odd that a few burglars manage to steal from a place like this. She huffs and squares her shoulders. Some secrets whale keeps even from me. So what's so special with this scroll? Uh, it's a parable. The kind that nourishes the inquisitive mind and poisons the foolish. Alright. Another side quest. Why is it chopping out when it does that? You know, so it's not... There must be a bug going on because that's not tracking these. Um... It didn't pick up this quest either. No, no. What's impressive is cleaving a man's spine without lopping the head clean off. That takes aim. Did that once. My case was an accident, and I still wake up some nights feeling bad for him. I still don't think it added it to my um, journal. Mm, it didn't. So there may be a bug. I might need to save and restart. Something over there. Out of curiosity, let's give it a save and then we'll reload real quick because I don't know why it hasn't tracked those quests. Reload it and see if that helps.
Hmm. All right. All right, did it add it to my journal? No, and we still see it really weirdly. Hmm. Let me look this bug up. I just realized the alert box was turned off here, so was the chat box. Hm. It's on now. Well, that's not telling me. See if we can find these guys. Yeah, I don't know why it hasn't. It's not tracking these quests right now, so there's some sort of a funky bug going on. But I looked it up manually, so at least I know where to go. Uh, there's an abandoned farmhouse right here. Turn it. Let's go, boys. See, now it just I said it added an addendum, the parable of whale. Is it in my journal now? No, it's still not in my journal. That's crazy. So it's definitely tracked. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. It was a task, not a quest. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. All right. Well, I found it now. <laughs> Fuck. I feel like an idiot now. Okay. There's a grimoire. Ooh. Some nice armor. Scroll of Whale. The scroll at first appears to be gibberish, a collection of symbols and characters with no apparent connection between them. But as you study them, however, you could swear that the characters begin to move. Slowly, almost imperceptibly, they shift and crisscross and realign. You were able to read the text. The simpleton seeks out a wise man said to know the answer to every question. Please, says the simpleton, you have to help me. The world terrifies me. I wake each morning and I don't know why. I make choices each day and I don't know what will happen as a result. I go to sleep each night and I don't know whether it will be my last. When the simpleton finishes, he notices that the wise man is weeping. The simpleton apologizes profusely and asks the wise man what he has said to upset him. The wise man shakes his head and wipes the tears from his eyes. He answers, some people have all excuse me <laughs> some people have all the luck as you take the scroll you hear a voice you have found it now lose it again what you think this theft was an accident the voice seems to shift as if the speaker were constantly changing age race and sex 
My relics were never meant to stay in one place for long. They are meant to be lost and found. It is the search that gives the thing value. Take this to Black Meadow. Find the drake that faces east and bury it neath its skull. Black Meadow, okay. Meadow. All right, first I need to, um, I got some new grimoires for you, bro. Um, nothing new in this one. Black Meadow? I have to find out. Ah, I have! It said the uh, skull that faces east. I'm about to find out. Ba -ba -da. Faces east. It's not the right one. It said facing east, did it not? Now this I haven't seen before. Can I put that book, that scroll in there? I don't even see the scroll. Okay, is there another drake that we're missing? Hmm. Oh, maybe we're supposed to do it and here. And the fire shows me something new. This scroll right here. Well, there's not another Drake. Oh, there's one right here. Aha! That one is facing east, so maybe that's the one we're supposed to do it at. Aha! The drake skull faces east. The soil underneath is soft and moist. Bury the scroll of whale. As we cover the ancient scroll with the last handful of soil, the shifted voice speaks in your head once more. Well done, watcher. Nice. Now we can go back to the crazy person in... Where was it? Copper Lane. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot to go back to, um, we got time. We got time. I think we have time. I want to see if I can get rid of that bad visitor at the, um, at my, at my pad. I 
guys not moving? What's going on? Taking yo sweet time. Good day, stranger. Whale asked me to hide it again. I'd call anyone else a liar with a story like that, but coming from you, she squints behind her thick spectacles. There's a certain logic, and if you've served Whale, you've served me too. Ooh. You're also free to visit the Elder Archives and take whatever books or scrolls you find in the open. Ooh. That was pretty cool. Hood. Stealthy of perception. I mean, give it to Durance. Because he needs the perception for his trap finding. Speaking of which. Spellline something you need this. No, I think I'm fine with what I've got right now. Alright, I need to check this real quick. Alright, I think we can get back to it. We can go back behind the doors at least. Lay in low. She gave me a key. Where do I use the key? Huh. Be cautious. Be constant. You give me any more gifts and people will start thinking you're playing favorites. Now this I haven't seen before. Theorems of Pandagram. These are just 
souls. I need to find out how to find the person that um, Aloth needs to talk to for his soul issues. It's something with animancy, and I haven't... I know there's, a, like, a sanatorium around here, and I don't remember where it's at. Dormitory. Maybe it's in the Scrivener's Dormitory. There's Scriveners. Maybe they can have something to say for Eloth. Well, my friend. You're a scrivener? Oh, this is the drug addict. Oh, I need to go, I need to remember to go back to the keep. Hold up. Don't let me forget about going back to the keep. There's nobody in here. These are just the dormitories anyway. Alright, let's go back to our castle see if we can't deal with that scuzz bucket who showed up. We're two hours in. Alright, I need to pay attention to the time. It's like, what, four? Four thirty. Let's go over here. Gelade. Well done. A formidable fortress in the old... Alright, well we can deal with that really quick. Style. I trust I guess he's setting people on edge. Uh -huh. Where's he at? None of these do security, so I think at this point it really doesn't matter what I purchase. To the dungeons. A wanted criminal. Where is he at? Can he get rid of these guys? I don't remember. Gelade, well done. A formidable fortress in the old style. We don't build them like this anymore. Oh, everybody needs to level Not up, by the too. Sea. Too vulnerable to death. I'm going to look this up real quick, because I don't remember how you can get... If you can even get rid of these. Okay.
I guess you can't do anything about them. Alright, well, let's level up while we're here. More powerful spells with him for sure. Oh, hold up. Um, yeah, I always take the passives. Love me some passives. Those are the best ones to take. Mechanics, please. I need him to pick locks. Faith. Well, that's interesting. That's nice. Cool, so everybody got a nice little bonus here. Might as well rest over here before we head back to Cad before we head back to the city. Alright, let's book you back to the city. Last thing the deer would need is another foreign colony. <laughs> uh, let's go to, uh, Brackenbury. I don't remember where the, um, Sanitarium is. No, I don't think it. Oh, yep, there it is, right over there. This might be where we can find answers for um, for um, 
L off. <laughs> Maybe. We'll find out. Quest updated, two-sided. That's his quest, I think. Yep. Head warden, okay. I probably don't want to go downstairs. Won't be in here. On the hunt. Use this stone as a vessel for transfer. Can you hear me, Oswin? The patient's eyes slowly open before a panic, wild expression washes over him. Unfortunately, the extended disassociation has permanent side effects. The patient becomes more agitated, grunting and moaning as he tugs at his bonds. With further research, we're confident we'll be able to rehabit rehabilitate patients like Oswin. Good day to you. A bald man with a crooked nose gestures in demonstration over the still body of a patient before a small gathering of interested onlookers. Feeling your gaze, he pauses his discussion. Have you come to sit in? Do you know anything about awakenings? I am afraid that's not my area of expertise. All right, well, I don't see anybody on this level that I can talk to. That's eh, just her soul. Nope, I think we have to go downstairs. Oakley doakley. Doors are all locked. The edges of the cage are dented and scored with claw marks. On the hunt. Hello. A woman paces back and forth, her feet crunching on the soft red carpet. She gestures, mumbles to herself, feeling, shaking her head as she pours over pages of notes. She almost walks into you. Of course, see, here I am, looking so hard for answers in my research that I do not see the kit standing in front of me. What can I do? I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. She laughs bitterly. Ah, that would be me. But the lack of research subjects has made me more an expert in counting floorboards. I would like to transfer Anamancy's success in the buttercine pre-awakening souls to soothing those whose souls have already awakened, but I need subjects. And most of the patients here are too broken to produce reliable results. It is a tragedy to have come so far for nothing. Well, you're in luck, because I have a volunteer. She springs to the balls of her feet, beaming. Gigarde, who is it? Alas' lips curl into a frown. I don't know about this. She grins more broadly still. Don't be silly. The process is perfectly harmless. All you must do is stand in that cage. I beg your pardon. I jest. Your hands are so uptight. I do not even know what the thing is used for. It belonged to the last occupant of this office, I think. Now they upgrade him to sell. Haha. <laughs> Again, I jest. <laughs> she rubs her hand together, getting down to business. So, I need you to sit here. 
She takes Al off Bill's shoulders and steers him to the couch. Try to relax. Well, don't try too hard. Then you will not be relaxing. Indeed. His eyes are humorless. And you must also wear these. A little cold, but the copper will help conduct your essence. The Animancer fastens thick copper bands to Alice's forehead and wrists. As she ratchets them tighter, his face twitches with suppressed irritation. Now, I will examine your soul through my scope. She reaches into her desk and produces a long chambered tube. Knobs, dials, and a small toothed wheels run along the side of the device. It is fitted with other lenses, cut to different thicknesses and concavities. By manipulating them, I will find the angles and densities that will allow me to track the anomalies in your soul. Does this mean we'll get to talk to Issa more and more? I like that lady. <laughs> she raises a finger. But first, we must find this cunning interloper. You will find some personal questions while I make adjustments. Pelagina says, good luck. You'd have more easier time getting straight out of the drunk priest of whale. Allah squirms on the couch. Very well. She holds the scope to her eye and flicks a knob. To begin, tell me something personal. Something from the time before your awakening. There's nothing to tell. I was just a normal child living in the Kithwood. He looks to you. His face is set in a frown, but the rigid edges of apprehension show through nevertheless. What do you remember about your home? As you speak to Aloth, you feel your voice like a bell in your chest. It tolls softly, luring him into the mists of his own memories. Belisage doesn't seem to notice anything, but you feel as if your words are soothing his essence, untangling its many threads. He closes his eyes. Comfortable, modest, quiet when mother is away, which is most of the time. Quiet enough to hear the clink of the glass on wood. That is when I know to be most careful. Father is good about hiding the bottles. Mother, when she's home, is good at pretending not to notice them. Ah, this is good. I am starting to see something. Continue. Tell us about the time you awakened. She bites her tongue as she twists one of the dials. I am in my fifth year of training. Mother is home. I can let my guard down a little because when she is around, he is usually only angry with her. But he has heard that I have had trouble casting missiles, that my flame shields are unstable. He is furious that I have failed, and Mother's presence reminds him that he has failed, too. The first blow takes me by surprise. One moment I am sweeping the kitchen, and the next I am sprawled on the ground, stupidly looking at flecks of my blood on the tile. His boots, glistening with fresh polish, flood across the floor. He kicks me in the stomach, and I curl up to shield my vitals. But it is pointless. Protecting one thing only leaves something else exposed. Still huddled on the ground, I retreat as fast as I can until only the vision of the kitchen and my own trembling knees is nothing but a pinprick against a field of black. His, jaws lock, his jaw locks and his eyes twitch beneath their lids. Maldicio! Bella Sage furiously cranks the knobs along her scope. He's hypnotized himself with his old memory. You've got to bring him out of it quickly. I almost have it. Squeeze Alice's hand. You're safe. Everything's fine. His eyes snap open and the expression you see in them isn't his. He's near safe when I hop upon him. Belisage sucks a deep breath through her teeth. That's it. I'm seeing a shift in this essence. Something spreading and congealing. She passes at you. She glances at you over her scope. Keep talking. He seems to respond to you. What brought you here? Cracking bones and voices high in air. That warm molasses feeling that creeps into your gut when crisis is nigh. That's different. Perfetto. We have flares of a totally distinct essence. She jots shorthand notes under the pages next to her and turns one clicky knob of her scope. Now, decide to get the two of them talking. Ah. Tell Ilof why you've wakened. Hi, <laughs> he's the one that needed me. Hiding in his bone bag like turtle in its shell. Ilof's face twists in fury. I never turned it over to you. Good, yes, very good. She rests from her scribbling only to make another adjustment to her scope. I can now see two separate patterns of essence. Where he ebbs, the other flows. It's as if the awakened soul fills the space as if he leaves empty. She prompts you with a circling of her wrist. Quill is still in hand. Go on. What are you... Okay, what are you ceding space to Isamor? I've given her nothing. She usurps me in my own body. Aye, and I lend him a pair too. You should wit what I did that old man of his. Or the last time he laid a hand on us, I'd break it in three places. Alice's head jerks to the side. That wasn't your decision. It's never been your decision. 
Nay, was awakening. But now that I'm stuck with you and damned if I let you ninny in, then I guess both through the scupper. Ah, very good. She lowers her scope and consults her notes. I think I finally got something we can work with. I've tracked the almost essence through the exchange. She had a particular high density index during the most heated portions of their argument, and their essence seems to localize most clearly in the lower portion of the subject's left ribcage. That's right on the spleen, of course, which means that she's triggered by black bile. No doubt the subject's characteristics melancholy is to blame. Aleph blinks back at you, and in the midst of his perturb... I can't pronounce that word. <laughs> Perturbation? You're not quite sure who's looking out of his eyes. That's utter horseshit. How gracious. Bella says, glares at him. Yes, never mind my years of training. I suppose you have a better explanation? So basically, um... You know, Isselmer manifests when Aleph is in danger or under pressure. Hmm, could be true. I'll have to check this against other research. Alright, what does this mean for me? She frowns at her notes, tapping her cheek with a quill and making a grand show of concentration. However, you catch her stealing a glance at you over the pages. I think she's trying to help you stand up for yourself. You may not like her methods, but you should hear her out. If you had to listen to her half as much as I do, you wouldn't say that. He scowls, but you notice something thoughtful in his frown. I have a lot to process. Thank you for your help. Ah, I finally have material worth publishing. You'll be the toast of Rivio, Fendre Olaf. He gris grimace melts into a crooked scowl. Ah, advancing the right wise principles of animancy, just what you've always wanted. As you turn to leave, you catch a darting movement out of the corner of your eye. Bella Sage is humming to herself, still occupied with her scope, but Aleph is holding her notes. He's just about to tuck them into his cloak, cloak when he catches you watching. He holds a finger to his lips, his eyes wide and imploring. Please, I, I don't want my personal information published like this, especially not after her nonsense. Man, he made a deal with her, though. Oh, man. Before I choose, I am going to look this up because I don't want to I don't want to screw up my relationship with Aloth, but um I kind of feel like he needs to, um, he needs to hold to his, um, No, man, like, I feel like that was the deal. Alright, I don't think it mattered. So. Mordred. An animizer scribbles feverishly on parchment scroll. Well, at least we figured that with him. Alright. Some smooth and silent discourse. He looks at me with mingled perplexity and well irritation. Done. What are you working on? What's a wicked? A hollowborn who received a transplanted animal soul during infancy. Eee. Yeah, that's not cool. Ooh, a quest has just been added to me. Uh, 
Ooh, vampires. Um, it's a sign. Sagani. Don't have a key for that. Well, at least we advanced um, Alloth's quest. It's the most important thing. But I think that's where we're going to end it today. It is getting close to five o'clock. I'm going to take a little bit of a break. I've got Minecraft at 7 with my brother and my niece and nephew. I need to go take a shower, do some chores, some other stuff. So I will catch everybody tomorrow, probably in the morning. Um, normally, Chris and I stream Warcraft in the mornings, but she went to her sister's tonight. So um, in the next town over. So she'll be back tomorrow at some point, but not for the morning. So I'll probably stream something tomorrow morning. Not sure what yet. Um, either this or um, The Witcher 3, probably. Hell, I might do some Warcraft tomorrow morning. You never know. But in any case, I will be back. I got a new uh, video coming out at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'm going to do some more. Uh, we got Mondays in Middle Earth coming out on Monday. We're going to be reading through Chapter 7 of The Return of the King, which is... Let me look real quick. I'll tell you what chapter it is. We just finished the... Uh, chapter 6 was... Um, Pretty brutal. Chapter 7 is the Pyre of Denethor. Mm. When the dark shadows at the gate withdrew, Gandalf still sat motionless, but Pippin rose to his feet as if a great weight had been lifted from him. It's going to be a good chapter. So that'll be coming out Monday morning at 9 a.m. In the meantime, I'm going to go do some more research tonight as well. Take my shower, do my chores. I'll catch everybody tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. If you haven't already done so, check out the Patreon page if you want to support over there. Get into our game dev stuff and fantasy. Join as a member here. we got three different tiers to support. You can also do Super Chats. Thanks to those of you who do Super Chats and our members. And I'll see everybody in the next episode.